with COVID uh, was a new situation uh, where I would say invisible virus uh, created quite visible impacts. The way we live, the way we earn our livelihood, the way we love, uh, even the way we leave this temporal world, everything has been affected. So uh, in this situation, the mechanisms which are embedded in the constitution, like Council of Common Interest, then in executive realm, we have Interprovincial Coordination Ministry, which has a ministerial conference and also provincial conference. Uh, of course, they are very procedural. You have to requisition the session. You have to prepare summaries to bring them on agenda. You have to coordinate uh, in physical terms to bring all the stakeholders to Islamabad. Of course, it has communication, coordination, and consent consensus building efficacy, but it is very much procedural. So during COVID, what happened? Uh, we created a new temporary institutional architecture. It was not only federal provincial, but it was keeping in view the Pakistan's particular context. It was also civil military. Uh, we created national coordination and operation command center. So in that, uh, citizens and citizens in uniform, mandate bearers and the authorities, they sat together and they came up with the policy choices and day-to-day -day decision making. Of course, Prime Minister was taking the lead. Uh, above this platform was National Coordination Committee, where chief ministers and prime minister decided about vital issues. So in that way, uh, we were able to, uh, because uh, this platform provided uh, opportunity to take quick decisions, swift decisions. Uh, here, I would like to flag two issues. Uh, everything written, uh, black letter laws, constitutions, institutional mechanisms are uh, quite good. But the test comes when, litmus test comes when one federating unit out of the four is governed by party, which, is, which belongs to opposition. Then it is the test of the communication vectors. It is the test of uh, how you evolve uh, coordination and communication. So uh, in that way, uh, we saw in Pakistan, Sindh driving on certain counts and federal government following and criticizing as well. And, to understand that the area of conflict was airports, aviation, the quarantine on pretext of health. These are federal jurisdictions according to the federal legislative list. But those airports were in the provinces. And the first wave of COVID entered Pakistan via the Afghan border, the pilgrims coming back from Iran. So the province had to deal with the pilgrims, uh, whereas the border control, the quarantine uh, facilities, which were lacking in, there in Balochistan, and there was one question as well about Balochistan. So it, they had limited capacity, but they had to deal with a big crisis. And the federal government was not that swift to uh, establish quarantine facilities or st uh, enforce strict border controls. Same happened at Karachi, which is the economic capital and very much connected in terms of air travel and air connections. The provincial government practically went to the airports and tried to uh, conduct uh, uh, testing and things like that. So in that way, uh, it gave birth to a new form of conflicts. Second thing which I wanted to flag, local governments were practically non-existent in Pakistan. Constitutionally, it is the third tier, according to Article 32, according to Article 7, which defines the nomenclature of the state, and according to Article 140A, which empowers the provinces to create local governments with, which are politically empowered, physically devolved, and administratively uh, able to perform their duties. In Punjab, they were prematurely dissolved. In Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan, they have completed their terms. 
and in Sindh and Islamabad, there were federal government, uh, local governments, but they were not involved in the whole process the way they should have been involved. And COVID posed a totally new challenge. Constitution envisage abnormal situations. That's why we have a chapter on emergency provisions. Uh, and the triggers are very traditional, war, collapse of economy, breakdown of law and order. Here, there was a situation where economy was shut down, educational institutions were closed, um, but uh, the traditional triggers, the, there was a lack of imagination. Here, it was a public health crisis. So that's why executive and N COC had to take a lot of decisions and uh, uh, there was lockdown. Of course, there was a debate whether it is lockdown or a smart, smart lockdown. Uh, educational uh, institutions were closed, interprovincial transportation was closed. So in practical terms, there was emergency situation and instead of the traditional constitutional mechanisms or federal uh, mechanisms, we had to resort to con uh, executive uh, arrangement to address the situation, how effectively we were able to deal with that. Maybe my other uh, co-panelists will be able to respond to that, but this is how I will explain. Traditionally, we adopted the parliamentary route to federalism we have to do a lot in the executive domains. That's why there is a talk about civil services reforms in Pakistan. And here I will stop and uh, I will be happy to respond if there will be any questions. But I hope my contribution has made sense in understanding the Pakistani federalism context.